Okay, now let us move on to the t test. By the name, we see that uh, t distributions are associated here. Any statistical hypothesis test in which test statistics follows student's t distribution under null hypothesis is called t test. The most common use of t test comes when the means of two populations are different. So, notice that in the previous example when we computed about uh, the p values and p value test we, we were there dealing with one sample. I mean one population x1, x2. Now we may be dealing with, so I am going to write them like this uh, one population, I am going to superscript them one to indicate that this corresponds one. You may also have another population mm, x2 which I am going to superscript with two. Right now and uh, this numbers like the number of samples could differ. Now the question here is, uh, mm, I want to check, let us say the hypothesis is, this is uh, whether they are coming from a population which has the same mean. Suppose let us say, uh, I am assuming this is like f given under by mu 1 and this is let us say mu. Uh, mu. Now my null hypothesis is mu 1 is equals to, sorry. to mu 2 and my alternate hypothesis could be like a mu 1 not equals to mu 2. So, this is the common usage where we want to uh, this uh, t test comes into picture, but uh, it is not necessary that uh, we have to deal with uh, two population in using two tests, it could be used on a single population also. Okay. So, let us now look into this case like I mean we have whatever I explained it is just written here the most frequently are like one sample or two sample. In the one sample test we will check whether the population mean has the same specified value in the null hypothesis that is uh, they are having the same value let us say to something mu common and uh, two, uh, the two sample test says that whether null hypothesis says that the means of the two populations are equal. Oh, sorry, like uh, okay, let me rewind this. So, this is, uh, okay, now let me refine this. So, in the one sample location test, we have just uh, one population samples given to us and uh, there my hypothesis is to test whether my parameter is is equals to mu which is the underlying uh, specified parameter for the null hypothesis mu. And, uh, and of course, the null hypothesis here could be like a theta is not equals to mu. Okay? And this is for the one case and uh, for the two location test I have already given here in the two location I have two sets of sample and there I want to check whether this uh, two samples sorry two populations have the same mean or uh, they are differing. Often this uh, two sample tests are referred to as unpaired or independent uh, sample t test and uh, we will just see this. Okay, to apply two tests we make some assumptions. Uh, which by the way will hold for the Gaussian distributions by default, uh, Gaussian samples by default, uh, but uh, by making these assumptions maybe we can say something uh, more general. The most test statistics are like in general this uh, when that statistics I am interested will have this form z by s. So, there is a little notational change I would like to continue to denote this by z where z and s are functions of data. So, z and s are themselves random variables. 
Okay, now first for a, let's look into one sample t test. And in this one sample, the numerator z can be simply the sample mean. So here notice that in the one sample test, I am basically testing the hypothesis that my parameter theta is mu or not. It is a one sample test and let us say this is a one sample two sided test like uh, one sample two sided test. So, here the new numerator is the sample mean centralized by subtracting the uh, true uh, param the parameter of your null hypothesis and the denominator is your uh, estimate of your standard deviation okay s. Now in this one sample test we are going to assume that this x bar follows a normal distribution with mu and variance sigma by n and no always uh, uh, in this uh, recall that x bar is your estimate which estimate providing estimate for null hypothesis parameter. You are claiming by this you are claiming that x bar is giving me a good representation of mu and that is what like x bar um, have this x bar is the average. So, it will have the variance sigma square by n and uh, we are also going to assume that s square h square recall that s square is the estimate unbiased estimate of the variance when you multiply it by n minus 1 divided by sigma square it follows a chi square distribution with n minus degrees of freedom and z are and z and s are independent. Notice that even though we put this as assumption when my x my random sample is coming from a Gaussian distributed with parameter let us say mu and sigma this assumptions naturally hold which we have already seen when uh, we are uh, talked about uh, uh, sampling from, uh, uh, from random distribution sorry um, when we talked about uh, sampling. Uh, and uh, studied uh, properties of random samples. In the two sample test where let us say we have one set of uh, random sample like this, we are going to say that this means of the two population to be com compared should form a normal distribution. That is if you are going to compute this, this is going to be normal and also if you are going to compute the mean of this, this should be normal and both of these having the same variance. The samples are coming from a population distribution having same variance and that the data this set of samples this random samples should be independent uh, or the sample independently. So, we can just say that uh, they are going to have the same variance the samples are generated from a underlying population which have the same variance and uh, we want their sample mean to follow normal distribution. Notice that all distribution again holds when your samples are drawn from Gaussian like uh, if they are drawn from let us say some Gaussian mu 1 and sigma square and uh, this one let us say is coming from uh, let us say mu 2 and sigma square this all this uh, properties naturally holds good. Now let us see what would be the statistics for me here. 
to compute the p value. Now that let us focus on one sample test here. Okay, now let us directly look into this. And here in the one sample test, my I am basically testing the hypothesis whether mu naught or not. We let us say take the two sided case. For this, I can have a statistics which is x bar minus mu naught divided by s by square root n. Notice that earlier it was sigma, sorry sigma. Now I have replaced it by s because I do not know sigma also in my case. Okay. So, here we are basically saying I do not know none of this, both this mean and variance are unknown. If we knew that we could have gone with the p test which we already did before. Now, if you recall by our uh, assumption that this is normal distributed and uh, this is chi square distribution with n minus degrees of freedom. If you look into the ratio, the ratio is distributed as student t distributions with n minus 1 degrees of freedom which we denote like this. Now with this, I can again go back and compute my p values. What is the probability that z is greater than or equals to z? Now here my z is t distributed with n minus 1 degrees of freedom and uh, from the t distribution table for any given z which is coming from my data, I can readily compute this value and uh, compare it against a given significance level and uh, decide whether my claims are statistically significant or not. Okay, And uh, this is where the I hope it is clear how the uh, t distribution came into picture here because we do not know the variance that is why we used uh, unbiased estimator for uh, uh, variance here or like rather unbiased estimator for standard variance here. And once we do that we know already that this statistics follows a t distribution and uh, we can use the properties of t distributions here. Now, Fine, this is clear. I hope for the case of uh, one, uh, one sample test. Now, how to check this for the two sample case? And recall that for the two sample case, I am going to assume the variance are same. I am also going to assume the two samples have the same number of samples. They could be different, but I am going to start with the case where they have the same number of samples. So, here x n 1 So, let us case where n 1 equals to n 2. Now, in this case I am interested in the hypothesis that whether the their means are equal or not. Uh, one can argue that after a uh, little bit of manipulation, this could be taken as a statistics where x1 bar as usual is the sample mean coming from the first population and x2 bar is the sample mean coming from the second population. And uh, sp here is the value of the standard deviation estimator unbiased value that I got and this is 
uh, again here x1 x s1 square is the uh, unbiased estimator of your variance and x s2 squared here it is going to be unbiased uh, sample estimates of your variance of sa uh, sample uh, 2. So, notice that uh, we have assumed in this case uh, they are same actually you could combine these two samples and uh, get uh, one value for your uh, common uh, uh, variance or uh, sorry estimate of the variance or uh, or uh, your estimate combine all the samples like uh, in this case maybe let us call this n you can combine all the samples we will you are going to end up with the two n samples to get uh, uh, combine all to get your uh, estimate of standard deviation. Even though here I have written that as if this is computed from this uh, n1 sample separately from the population of the first first population and x x2 is coming from the second population, but uh, uh, for the variance since they have the sa same common variance and all the samples are independent of each other, you can just uh, uh, use all the 2n samples to get uh, uh, one standard uh, sorry estimate of your standard deviation. And now one can show that or it is actually straightforward to observe that the z here is going to be a t distribution with 2 n minus 2 degrees of freedom where n is the common sample size. Again now once you have this for a given z you can compute the p value and then compare against the given significance level to see whether you want to accept or uh, reject or like uh, accept or uh, reject uh, the alternate hypothesis. This could be also extended to the case when the number of sample size are not equal n1 is not same as n2, but still uh, under the same variance case. Again here one can show that the st statistics that is of relevance here can be given as the difference of uh, the sample means of the populations divided by their uh, standard uh, estimated standard deviation and uh, that could be computed in this fashion. I am just leaving this uh, calculations, but uh, you can verify that indeed the standard deviation the estimate of the standard uh, deviation can be given that. Okay. And uh, here now we can see that this uh, z the denominator here is actually a chi square distribution with n1 plus n2 minus 2 degrees of freedom and, uh, and now you can argue that the z is also have t distribution with n1 plus n2 minus 2 degrees of freedom. Now once you know this is a t distribution with a certain degrees of freedom, you can again go and compute your p value and compare against your significance level and decide to accept the alternate hypothesis or reject your alternate hypothesis or not accept the alternate hypothesis. Okay. Now, this is where whenever we have our test statistics following the t distribution, we can use all this. But it may happen that 
every time we may not such statistics may not be just like a, a t distribution you may end up with some situation where your statistical tests will involve test statistic which has f distribution under the null hypothesis and uh, you may have to use properties of the f distribution to compute your p value okay so this f distribution we will not go into detail here like i just want to give you an idea of uh, what is going to how this f uh, distribution can possibly arise suppose let's say you have now more than two populations Mm, let's call this as two. Sorry. Uh, x two one. All that to x two n, and now x three is x one three all the way up to x n three. Let's say this is uh, with uh, some distribution with parameter mu1 and this one with some distribution with parameter q and this one with distribution with parameter mu3. So one you may be interested in testing the hypothesis that okay whether all these values are equal or mu i equals to mu j uh, for some ij I mean you can go on like uh, you can have a n number of uh, such uh, or m number of such populations for some ij pair okay now when you are going to answer such question you may have to construct certain statistics and uh, after some analysis one may end up with the statistics which actually satisfies a f distribution and in fact this is the case in analysis of variance so in analysis of variance you are interested in exactly this question whether the underlying parameters or the population parameters are all same or they differ and when you are going to construct a test statistics for that and uh, when you have to suitably uh, make the test statistics so that you are able to say something about your claim then that statistics will have f distributions okay we will not get into the details here but uh, that is something uh, uh, you can just keep in mind and uh, study more and also that arises in regression models like uh, for example when you want to have uh, let's say I hope all many of you might be already knowing uh, uh, linear regression. So linear regressions text of uh, given a data point x. This is like your input. It was trying to find a relation between x and y, and uh, this relation between x and y happens through this parameter theta, and uh, there is something perturbation or noise here. So given a x we want to find out what is the best y here and initially the theta is unknown we want to find what is that theta and uh, given a set of observation like let's say uh, y1 x1 y2 x2 like that you have some n observation and uh, based on that you want to find a best estimation or representation of that theta to test whether whatever you have done are good you need to have a statistics and when you find a statistics there the f distribution arises okay to just uh, briefly say 
little more about uh, analysis of variance. So the one way ANOVA also refers to as one factor ANOVA is a parametric test you to test for a statistically significant difference of an outcome between three or more groups. So here you would be interested to consider when three or more groups are there when it is less than three we already know how to use a significance test using our p values computed based on our t distributions. So here we would be interested in checking I want to challenge saying that at least one of the groups is statistically uh, significant uh, sorry statistically significantly different than the other okay. So actually the name ANOVA here it talks about analysis of variance but uh, it is not actually about the variance it is actually analysis of the variance in the means analysis of variance in means. Like for example, as in the previous example I said like your null hypothesis is checking whether all the parameters are same and your alternate hypothesis is are they, are they differ. So the variance in the mean is what the ANOVA test is trying to identify whether the parameters or let us say the mean values of all these distributions are the same or not is what we are going to uh, take as a null hypothesis and try to validate it. Okay. So if it so happens that when I do ANOVA test the p value happens to be statistically significant then one can't tell which group is different like among this which groups are different like maybe possibly they are all the same you do not have enough evidence to say that okay they are different. So this we already this is like a brief things which we already talked about like suppose let us say we have this uh, x1, x2 and x3 like that right like we had this samples like as I written here like uh, so these are like all independent variables and we want to define uh, that defines the groups that are to be compared let us say these are all the values here all the the grades of a three bunch of students and we want to see that okay whether their average scores are same or uh, I want to validate the hypothesis that okay their average test will be same and um, we maybe we can use ANOVA uh, test here and uh, there the F test arises or like as I said it could be also can come in um, uh, let us say in kind of a regression models where you have uh, a bunch of uh, uh, like okay you have we are going to observe data which are of the form y equals to theta transpose x plus noise and uh, this may be you may be observing this data for a bunch of let us say you can observe let me call this y1, uh, uh, y x1, 1, and y1, 2, x1, 2, let us say like this you have some bunch of data. Mm. And this is one population and another could be like let us say y2 mm, x21 y22 x22 uh, then let us say y2n and y2n and the third could be y31 x31 y32 x32 like this these are like three bunch of datas you are observed which are like where y's are dependent on your x and now you want to claim whether these parameters the, the three parameters associated with this through parameter through this uh, linear relation that is whether the theta 1 and the theta 2 and the theta 3 are same or not 
then uh, you want to again want to use this ANOVA test where uh, F test uh, can arise or F distribution can arise where you can calculate again your p value using those uh, F distribution tables. Okay, so with this I hope you people got a summary of uh, what is a p value, what is a p test one can use when we know the variance and we are dealing with uh, one population and uh, then you got some exposure to t values, t test where we do not know the variance and we have to find the population mean or the parameter of a single sample or a two samples. Then we also talked about when we have to look for more than two samples, uh, whether they have the same parameters or not, either in the independent case or the dependence case, how F distribution can help us compute the p-value and uh, decide our uh, significance of the statistical test. Okay, so with this uh, we will stop here. Thank you.